You know that the devil comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the only reason that he comes. To steal, to kill, and destroy the life of a Christian. In the book of Proverbs, God is speaking through Solomon. And he says this, that there is a woman. This woman in Proverbs is talking about a physical woman, but for us it's a spiritual. It's a spirit. It's an ideology. It's a way that the world thinks. It said that this woman dresses up. She dresses up very lewdly, promiscuous. She goes out to the corner, and she begins to call out, is there anybody that will come unto me? Anybody that will come enjoy my pleasures? And it says in the Proverbs that there's a young man that was simple in mind, foolish in mind. And that he went into her. When he went into her, he did not know that her ways, her feet, were leading straight to destruction and hell. But he went into her and she said, hey, come on to me. My husband has gone on a far journey. And he has taken a bag full of money. We don't have to worry about him coming back and catching us in anything. Isn't that how the world is? How the world, the ideologies, the pleasures of the world, the lust of the flesh, calls us into the pleasure, into the house of doing what you want to do. Come into my house. Come enjoy the pleasure of the world. And you don't have to worry about any consequences. You don't have to worry about anything that's going to happen to you, your family, your mental health, your finances. Don't worry. There's no consequences. We're not going to get caught up. So this woman calls out only to the simple in mind, only to the foolish in mind. But her ways, her feet lead straight to a path of destruction. We're going to talk about three men in this story. Three men in this story. And through this story, God is going to encourage you, help you, edified you and build you up before we get into these three men i want to encourage you if you're not a subscriber to my channel take a second press that button and subscribe to my channel also make sure that you turn on all notifications so that every day that i drop a video you'll be one of the first ones to be encouraged by god's word remember before you leave watch this video all the way through because it's going to be a blessing it's going to help you spiritually but before you leave make sure you check out some of these other videos they're going to be a great blessing to you we're going to talk about these three men. The first one is Manasseh. Did you know that Manasseh's father was King Hezekiah? Next to King David, he's considered one of the greatest kings that ever lived. He was a hero. He tore down all the gods that the other kings had set up, all the idols and the high places that the other kings had set up. He was a good man. He was the one that prayed when he was sick, and God came back through the prophet Isaiah and gave him 15 more years. He was a mighty man of God, and he had favor from the Lord. And he imparted those things into his son Manasseh. But sometimes, even though you might have a good example, even though you might have a good testimony in front of you, every person is led by their own decisions, their own free will. Well, young Manasseh became a king when he was young, and he didn't follow in the steps of his father. Matter of fact, it said that he was one of the most evil kings that had ever been risen up, and he was a king for over 40-something years. But you see, this young king, he was responsible for leading people to sin. He was responsible for bringing idols into the kingdom of God, into the temple of God, and worshiping idols, stars, and, and all different type of gods in the house of God. He led the people astray. It said that he was very evil. And God, in his, in his justice, brought a king called Nebuchadnezzar. And through Nebuchadnezzar, this king Manasseh was snatched up, put a bronze, bronze hook through his nose, bronze shackles would represent judgment, and took him into Babylon. And he was in a dark dungeon because, you know, sometimes the sin that says, hey, come on into my house. Come enjoy my pleasures. Come enjoy. There's no there's no one coming. He, he's gone on with a bag of money. There's no consequences. We can have fun. and There's no payment for it. Well, they do have a payment. They do have consequences. He found himself in the middle of a dungeon, in the middle of a dungeon in judgment. God was dealing with him. But you know what Manasseh did? He didn't quit. He didn't stop. You know what he did? He cried out to the Lord. It's something that we should do every single day. Yeah, we might fall into sin. We might, we might go into the house of this woman and try to indulge in those pleasures. But then we find ourselves in a, in a ditch, in a dungeon, in a deep hole of sin. And we need to do like King Manasseh. He cried out to the Lord and said that he prayed such a prayer that it touched the heart of God. God took Manasseh out of the dungeon, brought him back into his throne, set him down as a king. But when he became a king again, you know what he did? He tore down those idols. He tore down those images. He took those things out of the church house. He built up He built up defenses. He built up walls. He built up fortresses. He said, never again. The devil got me one time, but he won't get me again. 
King Manasseh learned his lesson. He cried out to the Lord. This is something as Christians we must do every single day. Cry out to the Lord. When you fall into sin, when you fall into the hole, when you listen to this woman, this ideology, this sensuality, this carnal pleasures, when you listen to it and you invite it into the sin and you grab hold of the sin and, and it puts you into that, into that dark hole, that dark dungeon, cry out to the Lord. The second person we're going to talk about is a man of God. He loved the Lord. His name was Samson. You know, Samson, he was one of the one of the mightiest men that ever walked. You know that he was a Nazarite before he was born. It was called that he should never cut his hair, that he was going to be a savior to the people, that he was going to be a strong man, holy, separated for the use of God. But one thing about Samson, his eyes always caused him trouble. Sexual morality was his battle. That was his problem. That was his struggle. You know what happened? It got him caught up. He ended up going to a prostitute named Deliah. You know about the story. Deliah lied to him. He said, where do you get your strength from? Where do you get your strength from? He lied to her three, four times, but finally got tired of lying and said, you know what? My strength is in my, in my hair. That's a covenant I made with God never to cut my hair. My hair is a covenant. It's a promise I made with God. If I cut my hair, then God won't be with me. You know what she did? She put him to sleep. And look how dirty this woman was. She didn't even cut his hair. She called another man to cut his hair. Look how dirty the devil is. He's a liar. He's a destroyer. He's a murderer. He cut his hair. She says, Samson, Samson, the enemy is upon you. And he got up thinking that God was with him like every other time. But this time, God was not with him. Can I tell you something? Sin always has consequences. Sin will cost you. And sometimes God will say, you know what? Go ahead. You want it? Take it. And that's one of the scariest verses in the Bible, thinking that God was with him. He got up, he fought, but he was weak. His strength had left him. God had left him, and he went into the dungeon where they plucked out his eyes. And they made fun of him and mocked him for years because that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to lead you into sin. He wants you to grab hold of sin, and then he wants you to fall into condemnation, and then he wants to mock you and say, you're a fake Christian. You're a hypocritical Christian. You don't, you're not real. You don't love God. You don't love Jesus. You don't respect the Holy Spirit. You don't have conviction. You don't want to change. You don't want to be set free. Look at you. You're a dirty Christian. But those are the lies of the enemy. You know what sin cost him? His eyes, his calling. But wait there in the middle of that dungeon. Because sin will take you to that dungeon. It will take you to that dark place. It will take you to that dark place. But right there in that dark place, you know what Samson said? He said, oh, God, I'm sorry, God. He did what we should all do when we fall into sin. He said, God, please forgive me, Lord. Please, Lord, give me one more chance. Give me one more opportunity. And God raised him up. Hair began to grow on his hair again. And one time, Samson destroyed more men in his death than he did in his life. Can I tell you something? We need to be like Samson. We need to be men that say, I'm not going to quit. I messed up. I, I, I destroyed my calling. I destroyed my purpose. But you know what, God? You're not done with me. You're not tired of me. You'll, you'll, you'll bring me back. Hallelujah. He repented. He got back up. And God used his life in a mighty way. I'm going to talk about the third person. He was a young man. It's called the prodigal son. The story is found in the book of Luke. You know what the prodigal son was? He was a son that was arrogant. He was prideful. He wasn't content with what God was doing in his life, his family, his house, all the riches, all the inheritance. You know what he told his dad? Give me this and give me my inheritance. I want it and I want it now. That was just the same term, terminology as saying, you know what, dad? I wish you would die already. I'm tired of you. That was what he was saying. Give me my inheritance, the father. Just like God always gives us an opportunity, he let his son go. That son went, spent his money on loose living, women, immorality. Just like that woman, come, come, come enjoy me. Look, my husband's gone with a bag of money. He won't be back for a while. Don't worry. There's no consequences. Don't worry. Nobody's going to know. There's no shame, but there is. It's a lie. It's a lie. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And so this prodigal son went away, spent all of his money, and finally he was so dirty. He was so nasty. All his friends left to go. He was, he was desiring to eat with the pigs, a dirty, nasty, filthy life. Isn't that what sin will take you? Isn't that place where it will take you in your mind, in your heart? full of condemnation, full of shame, full of, full of desires, only to, to live for the world, the sensual pleasures of the world. But that young man, he caught snap right there in the middle of his pit, right in the middle of his darkness. You see, sin put Samson in the pit. It put Manasseh in the pit. The prodigal son, he was in the pit, but he was in a dark, dark place, a lonely place. And right there he said, you know what? I'm tripping. 
I'm not supposed to be here in my father's house. Even the slaves eat better than me. I know what I'll do. I'll go back to my father's house. And he didn't feel like he was even worthy to be a son. But as he walked back, who was there? His father was there looking down the road. He ran to his son. He picked him up. He said, son, I'm glad you were dead, but now you're alive. Thank you, Jesus. He put new shoes on him, put new clothes on him. He threw a humongous feast. Because it says in the Bible that there is a feast in heaven, a party in heaven when one sinner repents than a hundred righteous that don't repent. Hallelujah. All we have to do is repent. All we have to do is get back up. And we got to know that we got to stop listening to that woman. She has a big mouth. She dresses lewdly. That means the ideologies of the world, the sensuality of the world, the pleasure of the world, it's going to look good. It's going to talk good. But the trap of the devil, it always, always brings us into a dark pit always brings us to a dark place. If you find yourself there, what you need to do, you need to be like Samson. You need to be not Manasseh. You need to be like the prodigal son and get back up. Get back up. Get back up. Repent and say, Lord, forgive me. Give me one more chance. Give me one more opportunity and I'll serve you again. And God will restore you. He'll lift you and he'll build you up. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. If it has, make sure you press subscribe to my channel. Remember, turn on all notifications. God bless you. Have a great day.